we will now talk about degree of morphism so say we have a morphism f between two smooth projective varieties x and y so both these varieties are of same dimension so the best way to learn about degree of morphism is to see silverman's book on elliptic curves so degree of f is 0 if f is not on to and this field extension kx to ky if f is on to and you know by contravariance that ky is contained in kx and recall this ky is nothing but field of fractions corresponding to the variety y and similarly for kx so the big theorem is so say you have f the morphism between projective varieties of same dimension and both x and y are smooth then you pick a point y in variety y and you take all the x's which lie in the inverse image of y and you find the order of t composed with f for all those x's which lie in the inverse image now we only need to talk about this function t and this t is nothing but a regular function in the neighborhood of the point we have picked and the order of this function is just one so this is y and this is variety x so you fixed a point here in the variety y and then you pick its inverse image you have all these x's lying in the variety x and you need to find order at these points x for the function f you just compose it with some t so that it makes sense it should not be that this function suddenly blows up or something important corollary, corollary which we will use is so say f is a morphism between x and y then if degree of f is 1 then f is a isomorphism so now we are going to prove important result that smooth projective curve of genus 0 is isomorphic to p1 and this will use the corollary which we have just stated in the previous slide so you fixed first a smooth projective curve of genus 0 and you call this as x and we need to show x is isomorphic to p1 so you pick a point p in the variety x so the divisor here is 1 times p so we are going to talk about this sheaf o of d or you can rewrite it as o of p or 1 times p so what are the global sections of this sheaf we are talking about so obviously constants are contained in this global sections also we have all the rational functions on x which are regular outside p and have a pole of order less than equal to 1 at p so now I want to talk about the degree of this so degree of this is just one you know because the divisor is one times p so you say degree of o of this point p is one now we have already talked about line bundles and we talked about line bundles as o of small d where d was some degree now we can also see this o of capital d as line bundles because you can always talk about degree of capital d yeah you just sum up the coefficients you have there and you get degree of this divisor so o of d is also a line bundle 
So if you write degree of D as small d, you again get the line bundle form we were talking about before. So now notice that degree of kx 2g minus 2g is 0, you get minus 2. And therefore degree of kx tensor width dual of op, this will be used in Riemann rock, this is minus 2. op has degree 1, so op star has degree minus 1, it is dual of op. So your tensor means you just add these two up, minus 2 minus 1 will give you minus 3. Now since the degree is negative, the global sections are 0. This is an important point, you should always keep this in mind. When the degree is negative, global sections are 0. So now you use Riemann rock. So we are just writing the Riemann rock for our sheaf O of P. Now this is 0 from above. Degree of OP is just 1, genus is 0, 1. So you get H0, X, comma, OP is 2. So the global sections on X are, there are two global sections. We already have constants. So there is something else here and we want to talk about it. So constants are already part of global sections. But there is also a non-constant rational function x. So maybe you call this function as f, which is regular outside p and has a pole of order less than or equal to 1 at p. So I'm just copying down the definition of global sections of O of p. So we have constant, the dimension is 2, so we have constant. So let us construct this morphism from x to p1 and we will show this as degree of f is 1 and therefore there is a isomorphism. So now we need to define this morphism f. We have to give this morphism f. Now obviously p1 is covered by two affine lines. So you take f as this constant rational function and we will use this f to give the proper morphism and show it has degree 1. So say x is u union v. Now v contains the point p and u does not contain point p. So f is regular on u and 1 by f is regular on v. So this is point P. So point P is contained in V and you have U here. So we have a morphism. So F gives a morphism. Basically what it does is you take U, you take every point of U, use F for evaluation, you get A1. Similarly from V to A1 using 1 by F. So degree of f is number of poles of f which you count with multiplicity. So since f is not a constant, degree of f has to be positive. Now notice that we are, we are talking now about degree of morphism. So f must have a pole of exactly order 1 at p. So degree of f is 1, exactly 1 and therefore we have the isomorphism from the corollary before. 